morning, San Antonio. My name is Lisa Holbrook, and I have the honor and pleasure of being the Texas PTA president. And first of all, I want to thank San Antonio for being such festive, friendly, and fun hosts for our largest training event, Launch Summer Leadership Seminar, which will start shortly after this event and continue on to Sunday. So thank you so much, San Antonio, for your graciousness. In fact, San Antonio is so supportive of this event that I am pleased, I'm not gonna read it, but I'm gonna hold up a proclamation that was issued by Mayor Ivy Taylor and the city of San Antonio that proclaims July 22nd through the 24th as Texas PTA launch days in San Antonio. So thank you so much to the city. Many of you are holding up signs right now that say something called Back the Future. What does that mean exactly? Two years ago, Texas PTA made a decision to contract with the marketing firm Edelman. And we asked them, because they had expertise in that area, to help us take the things that we already knew to be true and to capture that in a way that would resonate with parents, teachers, students, and the community at large. Excuse me. I got it. I'm glad for the breeze, frankly, but I better hold on to my, my notes. So what Edelman did is it help, they helped us as an association after countless hours spent with individuals at the grassroots level as well as leaders throughout all of Texas PTA to send a message to everyone about the importance of what PTA really represents. And we represent what is important to all of us, and that is the children and youth in this great state of Texas. They are our future. So when we want someone to join a PTA, we ask them a very simple question. And that question is, are you willing to back the future? Now, I mentioned the word PTA, Parent Teacher Association. Once someone is asked to join as a member, they have several options. One is that as a member and by paying dues, they are supporting the works of that local PTA as well as sending money to Texas and national PTA so that we can engage individuals at all levels. So that's one option that a person has. Many times, and several of you are sitting in this audience, you become a volunteer almost immediately. And then, if you're really fortunate, you get to become a leader in PTA. And sometimes becoming a volunteer and a leader and a member happens all at the same time. And those local PTA leaders and members, they are what make a difference in a school. When you have PTA on your campus, you are guaranteed that there are individuals there that are committed to family engagement, parent education, and advocating for every student and child on that campus. And there is no other organization that offers that to their parents, teachers, and students. Now, if you're really fortunate, when you're a local PTA leader, oftentimes you get involved in another group of PTAs that provides support and networking and training for those local leaders. And those organizations are called councils. And many times in your PTA career, if you are an individual who has great aptitude and enthusiasm and a willingness to learn, you are on the fast track in your PTA career, and oftentimes you move from that local level to that council level very quickly. Would that not be true, council leaders that are out in the audience? 
and we are very fortunate in the greater San Antonio area to have five councils that represent the students. And those councils are East Central. Where are you, East Central? Harlan. I gotta remember my band mom days. I gotta let you all do your thing. Harlandale. Northeast. North Side. And the San Antonio Independent School District Council. They are all here represented today. Now I mentioned that PTAs at campuses are integral to something called student success. So I want to give a shout out to the Power Scholars Academy, YMCA and Bell, who brought students today on a field trip. And I also want to acknowledge all the other students who are here today at this rally. Let's give them a round of applause. So when families and, and individuals in the community, they support the PTA as well as the school campus, the administrators, the district level, our elected officials, the community, when they support PTA, what that means is, is they are committed to engaging families and other stakeholders to the success of the students. And student success is not just academic. It also means that students are in a position to make healthy decisions about their lives. And so that is why we want our parents, our teachers, our students, by the way, students, you know you can join a PTA, any PTA, and our community at large, representatives behind me. We want all of these individuals to be behind family engagement that translates into student success. And so it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you a, some students from the East Central Junior ROTC who will be presenting the colors and Bradley Middle School students, Jasmine Bingsley and Evelyn Castillo who will be singing the national anthem. Please join me in the posting of the colors. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Cadet Command Sergeant Major Brianna Brett. Please stand and remain standing for the national anthem and the posting of the colors. As the color guard is moving into position, I will be announcing the color guard members. Commanding the color guard and carrying the American flag is Cadet Sergeant First Class Dallas Ramones. Guarding the American flag is Cadet Sergeant Lisa Darby. Carrying the Texas flag is Cadet Sergeant First Class Maria Arzaga. And guarding the Texas flag is Cadet Sergeant Michael Mira.
let's show our appreciation one more time for these very talented students. It gives me great pleasure at this time to introduce William McManus, your San Antonio Chief of Police. Thank you very much. You know, I just noticed Iron Man walked in up the top there. You know, if you didn't know one thing about PTA, you could stand here or sit there in the crowd and know that this is an important gathering. You know why? Notwithstanding the fact that Iron Man's here. Because you've got two congressmen, a state rep, and a city councilman here. How much, how much more representation do you have to think that this is an important event? The police department is a big partner with PTA. We do bike rodeos to teach kids school, uh, bike safety, road safety. We do safe driving initiatives to teach students the dangers of texting and driving and drinking and driving. And we're involved in youth literacy programs where myself and a number of other police officers go to the uh, elementary schools here and do reading with, uh, with young children. And then we work together as a whole with the community to make sure that our children are safe and that they have what they need in school and everything that they need to be successful. So, I'll leave you with SAPD is a partner. We have been and we will be going into the future. Thank you. Thank you, Chief McManus. PTA also, as he mentioned in his speech, depends on the support of elected leaders to make a difference for our children. And we know that, that they are important as we spend a lot of time advocating to them for our students. It gives me great pleasure at this time to introduce the Honorable Joaquin Castro, who is the U.S. Representative for Texas 20th Congressional District. Please join me in welcoming him. Thank you. Good morning. Welcome to San Antonio, y'all. I want to say to the teachers, the administrators, to, and most especially to the parents, Thank you for being part of PTA. Thank you for making a difference in the lives of your children and in the lives of the students of San Antonio and of Texas. I am a proud graduate of our public schools. Thank you. And I know how important it is that students be supported, not just in the classroom, but at home. A successful student is one that is supported very well by his or her parents and family members and relatives at home and also in the classroom. We spent so much time thinking about everything that happens inside the classroom, what students learn, making sure that teachers are well versed in the subjects that they should know uh, on testing. But we have to realize that there are important things that happen outside the classroom but still inside the school. And the work that you do is part of that. And you all know that when people are in school, when they're in K through 12, during that time, there's a lot of, uh, I think, the way I put it is, all of us go through this challenge of self-doubt, where you wonder whether you can pass uh, your standardized test, how well you're gonna do on the SAT or the ACT, whether you can pass calculus or chemistry or geometry. And it's the support of parents and friends and relatives and teachers, of course, that help students believe in themselves and believe that when they say they want to be a doctor or a lawyer or a nurse or a firefighter or a police officer, that they can actually do those things. So I wanted to come today to say thank you for helping our students believe in themselves. Thank you very much. Thank you, Congressman Castro. In addition, you're gonna hear from some more elected officials as the program progresses, but right now we're gonna turn our focus to how school leaders make a difference in the 
success of their PTAs and their schools. And one such gentleman that's here today to speak to you is a very strong supporter of PTAs, and that is the Northeast ISD Superintendent of Schools, Dr. Brian Gotardi. Thank you, Lisa. And thank you to the Northeast Council of PTAs wearing those blue shirts over there. Thank you. It is an honor for me to represent our area school districts and share the incredible impact of the PTA on our schools and our communities. I won't be able to list all the contributions made by the PTA throughout San Antonio, but I want to highlight three important ways that the PTA fulfills its theme of Back to Future. For me, Back to Future starts first with the relationship that school principals and superintendents have with their local PTAs. School principals who have a strong PTA walk with a little more confidence because they know there's a dedicated team of volunteers who have their back. PTA members serve on school committees, recruit other parent volunteers, and act as sounding boards for their principals. These are invaluable contributions and school leaders rely heavily on their PTAs. As superintendent, I also depend on the PTA leadership. They provide me with insightful feedback and identify areas that need our attention. I meet regularly with our PTA council and always walk away with a new awareness of how, how is our district doing. Back to the Future also describes the behind the scenes role that the PTA and volunteers play in public schools. They are in the background working hard to help ensure that all students have a bright future. The presence of the PTA and parent volunteers can be seen at school events, in the teacher workroom, in beautification projects, and in fundraising efforts. In Northeast alone, parent and community volunteers spend approximately 368,000 hours in our schools each year with an estimated value of more than $9 million. This in Thank you. That involvement is, is invaluable. Finally, Back to the Future defines for me how the PTA helps to build strong schools and communities. Research shows that students with involved parents are more likely to earn higher grades, attend school regularly, graduate high school, and continue with their post-secondary education. The PTA truly does back the future by encouraging parents to get involved in their children's education and in our schools. In Northeast and in many other districts, school PTAs work to strengthen communities beyond their school walls. Through the Adopt-a-School programs, PTAs help other campuses in need with donations and volunteers. I have personally witnessed the incredible generosity that PTA members show to children who are not their own. In Northeast, we have a saying. That saying is, every child, every day. The PTA's leadership, engagement, and advocacy helps us achieve our goal of a high quality education for every child. In San Antonio, we are also privileged to have city leaders who recognize the value of education and strong communities. One of those leaders is Ron Nirenberg. San Antonio City Councilman for District 8. Councilman Nirenberg has served District 8 since 2013 and has brought vision to citywide efforts involving sustainability, technology, workforce development, and transportation. Please help me welcome Councilman Ron Nirenberg, and thank you very much. Good morning. I'll be brief because I think it's going to be about 100 degrees in 10 minutes. <laughs> Thank you all for being here today. I'm a city councilman here in San Antonio, and our business is to build a great city. And you know better than anyone, especially all your attendees from the conference this week, that nowhere is the growth of Texas felt more acutely in our, than in our cities. But if there is one agenda that rings true across all the levels of government that we interact with, it is the back the future. Everything that we do in the city of San Antonio needs to be focused on the kids, 
the young people in our community that are going to inherit the decisions that we make today. So I want to say thank you to the PTAs here in San Antonio and across Texas for making that agenda the top of the agenda for our city and for cities all across the, all across the state. And I also want to say thank you to the many parents and teachers that are part of the associations down at the grassroots level. I see one of my uh, watchdog colleagues over here, dads of great students who help watch the doors of our schools. But we all know that it truly takes a village to create a great village. So thank you so much to the PTAs and thank you for all that you do. And it also gives me great pleasure uh, to introduce a colleague of mine, a former colleague of mine who is now serving with great distinction in District 123 in the state of Texas. Someone who has devoted countless hours, uh, unbelievable hours to really understand and advocate for public schools in our state my friend, former colleague, State Representative Diego Bernal. Good morning. Oh, you're in downtown San Antonio. Good morning. That's better. Uh, my name is Diego Bernal. I'm the State Representative for Texas House District 123, which you are in right now. And I want to talk to you guys for a quick second about the work, because what you're doing is work. I'm a public school guy, went through public school all the way through, and I wanted to understand your work. So I told my staff that I wanted to meet with the principals and leadership team for every single public school in my district. There are 55, and we have done that. And there are campuses in our district, there are campuses in our district from Northside, from Northeast, and my home district, SAISD. And let me tell you that after those visits, I understand the work. And let me tell you what I did not find there. On those visits, I did not find Republicans or Democrats. I did not find liberals or conservatives. I found people who were laser focused on one thing, and that is ensuring that our children, that our students have the very best education possible. That is what I found there. And so, You would agree with me, and your presence here demonstrates that. You would agree with me that our schools and our teachers and our students need help, right? They need our help. If the teachers agree, and the principals agree, and the parents agree, and the elected folks agree, there has to be something between where we are right now and where we'd like to go. And I really believe now, more than ever, after this exercise, that working together, making sure that parents' voices are heard in the halls of Austin, in the halls of Washington, or how we make that change. And so we all stand with you, ready to do that work. Your presence here is a testament to your dedication, and I cannot wait to get started. Thank you guys so much for being here. And as the councilman and the congressman and the police chief have said, we can't do this work alone. So it's my pleasure to introduce Michelle Ryerson, the Chief Nursing Officer of Pediatrics for University Healthcare. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Mr. Bernal, and good morning. To the PTA here in San Antonio and also uh, throughout the state of Texas, wow. Um, I'm a band mom. I can't tell you how important the work is that we do collectively to advocate for our children with one voice. At University Health System, one of the most important things that we've begun to realize over the course of the 20 years that I've been practicing here in San Antonio is that we cannot help children um, become a brighter part of our future unless they're healthy. And so at University Health System, um, as an important member of this community, we have to think beyond the hospital. We have to think beyond the ordinary and we need to partner with the PTAs and with our schools to keep the kids in school so they can um, really become a brighter future for our communities. And this isn't just in San Antonio, it's throughout the United States. It's really, really important that we bring health care to the places where children live in their neighborhoods where they live so that they stay out of hospitals. And so University Health System has really been an important leader, I think, in injury prevention. We're the level one trauma center for children in the, in the region. And we bring the Shared Dreams 
program to the school so that we can teach children about the importance of not drinking and driving. And now we also incorporate into that the, text, the no texting and driving. We also have new initiatives around population-based health as we are partnering with paramedics in our community to bring asthma management programs that are right now free into the homes so that children who have asthma and their families can learn how to manage that. And all of this is centered around trying to keep children healthy and in school. We also know that wellness and weight management is an important part of children's future and their ability to become um, and to, to be educated and be healthy. And in order to do that, we have a lot of community partners that are working on trying to keep children um, from gaining weight and managing their weight through healthy eating and exercise um, in their homes and in school. So I would just say, let's um, give a high five for you know, healthy eating, eat your veggies, um, exercise, don't text and drive, don't drink and drive, and thank you to the PTA and all of the members of our community who help us really bring health promotion and prevention into the schools where the children spend the majority of their time. And that's as it should be. So thank you to the PTA for all that you do. And we, we appreciate your partnership in trying to keep our children healthy and strong so that they can, be, um, they can really um, be the important future that we need for our communities. At this time, I'd like to give a big shout out to our U.S. Representative, Will Hurd, from the 23rd Texas uh, Congressional District, and um, he's going to share some information with you that's really important to backing our future. Howdy. Howdy. Got a few Aggies in the crowd. Let's give it up for the band and our spirit leaders for keeping the crowd hype. How about that? Come on, drum line, give us something. Give us a beat. And, and one person I always like to thank when I get to see him is our chief of police, uh, Chief McManus. What he does is so important to our city. Sometimes it's a thankless job, but Chief, there's many of us that appreciate what you do, and thanks for keeping us safe. Like, like many of the other speakers today, I'm a product of, of San Antonio's public schools. I'm a Northside guy. Come on, Northside, show some love. Leon Valley, Earl Rudder, John Marshall. And it's been great representing my hometown. I represent 29 counties, from San Antonio to El Paso, down to Eagle Pass. Two time zones, 820 miles on the border. It takes 10 and a half hours to drive 80 miles an hour from one corner to the other. It's actually the speed limit in 75% of the district, and I realized recently it's not the speed limit in all of Texas. Um, in my background, I was in the CIA. I was an undercover officer in the CIA. I was the dude in the back alleys at four o'clock in the morning, chasing terrorists, stopping Russians from stealing our secrets. It was a fantastic job. I did it in India, Pakistan, Afghanistan. I did it for almost 10 years. And I've been known as a national security guy. And people always ask me, Heard, how come you're always talking about education? I tell them it's very simple because education is a national security issue. Right? And what y'all do to make sure our kids are properly educated, because guess what? We're having to pre prepare them for jobs that don't exist right now. I chair a subcommittee on information technology, and I look at all this emerging technology, and the trends that we're going to see over the next 20 years is going to make the last 20 years look, look plain and simple. So we have to make sure that we have an educational system that are preparing our boys and girls for jobs that do not exist right now. And here's the reality. Congress actually did something this year. We've done a few things. Despite the, in the circus environment you see on TV, uh, despite the hyper-partisanship you hear about, we did something called the Every Student Should Succeed Act. Yeah, we can clap for that. It repealed No Child Left Behind. This was one of those things that people on both sides of the political aisle um, said there was a problem and we did something about it. Now here's the reality. Washington did its job. Now we no longer have a one size fits all solution to how we educate our kids. And yes, a kid in San Antonio should be able to do the same math problems as a kid in Los Angeles, but guess what? The teachers, the parents, the superintendents in San Antonio know the best way to educate that kid. You have the capability to do that now. But we gotta stay engaged, because now it's time for the state to enact these, the, the implementation of the ESSA, 
and we have to make sure that they don't implement a one-size-fits-all solution in Texas. So y'all being able to advocate on behalf of your students, being able to advocate on behalf of your administrators, San Antonio is, is, is um, fortunate to have some great administrators like Dr. Gotardi. And yeah, we can give him some love too. But it takes a village, it takes engagement by parents, it takes engagement from great administrators like we have, it takes engagement by civil and elected officials in order to do this, because guess what? Our future depends on it. So thank you for what you do, God bless you, and God bless the United States of America. Wow. San Antonio, you are very fortunate to have such strong leadership at the local, state, and federal levels. Let's give all of those speakers a round of applause. So we've heard from all of those strong leaders. Now we're going to shift our attention to some very, very important people. And that, at this time, will be a council leader and students from around this city to share with us how PTA backs their school. So it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you one of our council presidents of the five I mentioned earlier, Steve Garza, the president of San Antonio ISD Council of PTAs. Well, good morning, everyone. And uh, I want to say that I'm really excited to see everyone here. And to have this much representation is truly exciting. I think uh, I wrote a bunch of notes down, but I'm just going to wing it because I think the message I really want to say is we're the parents that are here. We're PTA. We know what we want to do. We know how strong PTA is. We know what PTA can do for our kids. What we need is the media. We need our representatives. We need our principals to get that message out to the whole city, to the whole state. We need all our parents to know that. And the only way that can be done is through media and, and just doing our best at schools. And I know that's the hard part, is getting parents involved. Um, I'll tell you my experience is just not knowing what it meant. How much, do I, how much time do I have to give? How hard is it gonna be? How much time do I have to be at the school? But if we take that one step, we pay our dues, we join PTA, and we just volunteer for one event. And then we realize, you know what, I like it. I enjoy doing this for the kids. My kids like seeing me on the school campus. My kids become more engaged in school. And believe it or not, they kind of worry when they see you up there and they behave better and they know the teacher's gonna know who you are. <laughs> so it, it serves two purposes. Uh, but when we're there, when we're engaged, it's true, our kids do well. And I just wanna encourage all of you to do what you do, push membership, back the future, because the, our children are our future. And I think by being here, and they've, the, our representative said it, they see that we're engaged. So thank you, and hopefully this gets out to more uh, people, and the news will put it out there so that they know how important uh, PTA is to our kids. So I'm gonna start introducing uh, our, our students that are gonna do some speaking for us. Uh, but maybe we can get the cheer and the drum line to do an a intro for them. Would you all do that for us, please? All right, thank you. Whenever you guys are ready.
All right, let's give them a hand of applause, please. Thank you. Thank you, Central. So the first uh, students I'd like to introduce are from San Antonio Independent School District, Hawthorne Academy, and we have uh, John and Hank Anthony. Come on, buddies. I'm John Anthony. I'm first grade. I'm in first grade at Hawthorne Academy. I'm Hank Anthony. I'm in third grade at Hawthorne Academy. What I like about the PTA is the carnival. He's pretty fun. The bungee run and the jousting. <laughs> yes, I really like the jousting. I'm not really planning this, I'm just kind of. <laughs> the food. <laughs> okay, my brother's favorite part of the carnival is the food. My favorite part is probably the, um, you know, the ha the Hawthorne Hall of Horrors, I just call it. Oh, uh, the Haunted House. The Haunted House. Um, and I agree with the food, it is pretty good. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Thank you, John and Hank. So, uh, this year was the first time uh, we had a, um, a fall festival at our school in, in a good number of years. And so it took a lot of work, but the PTA again was determined to get it done. We had a lot of parent engagement and as you can see, the kids really liked it. Uh, so our next student is Carmelina Alcala from East Central and she is a sixth grader. so many things for the kids and families in my community. This year, our PTA started the Wash Dog program at our school. The Wash Dog program invites all dads and father figures to come to the school and be a part of what their student does during the day. I was really happy to see my dad at school spending time with me and my classmates. He also got to help teachers at my school. Having dads on our campus helps make our school better and shows us that school is important. I invite you to back the future. Join your PTA and help support my campus in education. Help support the next generation of fearless leaders. Thank you. Okay, she killed it. That was awesome. Uh, next we have uh, Mr. Alan Aguirre from San Antonio Independent School District from uh, Hawthorne Academy and he will be in the eighth grade. <laughs> Hi, I'm a member of the PTA at Hawthorne Academy. Joining PTA, well, I'm here to encourage you to join PTA. Joining PTA has given me a voice, a voice for choice, a voice for change, as a member and part of a team. Here are some of the things that the PTA has done for us at my school. Well, they held two dances. One was a school-wide dance, which I helped by decorating, selling items at a concession stand, and dancing with the younger kids to really get them pumped up and excited. The second was a middle school dance. Now, middle schoolers aren't really known to be the biggest dancers of the school, but so why would you have a dance for us? Because we wanted one. The PTA likes to make the kids happy. Well, now, sure, there weren't many people on the dance floor, but it really gave us time to socialize with our friends without being told we were either too loud or that we can't talk at all. Another event that we had was a fall festival, which had fun games and good food, of course, and also a haunted house, which the students ran. Well, having the PTA at our school has really changed its environment, because we like to involve our students in activities, which really makes them feel important and feel like they do matter. It makes the school environment for the students more exciting and fun, instead of the tediousness that students make school out to be. PTA is becoming less of a parent-teacher association and more of a family association. Not, not only is it great for families, but it feels like a family. So please, join me and join the PTA. Thank you. Okay, these kids are 
just amazing speakers at their age. Uh, next, we have Nicholas Ewert from Northeast Independent School District, Johnson High School, and he is in uh, the Distracted Driving Club member. You might want to hold it, because it's fun. Uh, hi, my name is Nick Siebert. I'm a senior at Johnson High School, as well as the co-president of the JHS Parent Teachers Student Association Smart Driving Club. The JHS PTSA Smart Driving Club works on the campus and in our community to remind drivers and passengers the importance of not driving distracted. We work with TxDOT, SAPD, City Council, and other community members to bring attention to the dangers of texting and driving. We have made a difference on our campus and in our community. We have provided information and reminders to thousands of people that the best thing to do in your car is to keep your eyes on the road and your hands on the wheel. Our club has even walked the halls of the state capitol, urging our representatives to pass a no distracted driving law. These unique opportunities would not be possible without Johnson's PTSA, which provides us with the framework and financial support to go out in our city and help make it a safer place. Without the volunteers and support from the Jaguar PTSA, we would not have the chance to learn about the city and state government, take an active role as advocators on campus and in the community, or become empowered voices for cultural change. As a student and a driver, I am grateful for the chance the PTSA has provided me, and I am grateful for the chance to play an active role in helping our city leaders protect our community. Our club believes we all have the right to be safe as drivers, passengers, pedestrians, and cyclists. If you are texting and driving, or driving distracted in other ways, you jeopardize not only your own safety, but the safety of every San Antonian. Thank you, and please don't drive distracted. So I just want to say thank you again to all the students that spoke today. Uh, truly amazing, and I think this is uh, an example of what PTA does and uh, the influence we have on our kids. So I want to give it back to Lisa, and thank you for your uh, participation today. Texas PTA would not enjoy the successes that we do if it were, if it were not for our leaders like Steve, one of the councils that is represented here. So we appreciate all that our local and council PTAs, uh, how they serve the students every single day. So thank you and thanks to the students for your very inspiring reasons why you should be a part of PTA. I'd, I'd like to also take a minute to acknowledge our mascots, our... From Northeast ISD, we have our timber wolf and our tiger. Woohoo! I'd also like to acknowledge our East Central ISD students who have provided us spirit through the drum line and our drill team. So, students were a big part of this. I also want to uh, acknowledge that both National and Texas PTA appreciates. San Antonio's efforts at kicking off launch and the year with this Back the Future rally. I would like to acknowledge that we have our national PTA president in the audience, Laura Bay. We have Texas PTA president-elect and Northeast ISD alum, Sherry Doss. We have Sylvia Reyna has a lot of alumna. She did, at a large part of her career, work for San Antonio ISD in a variety of capacities, as well as in Dallas ISD, and we now have the pleasure of her being the Vice President of Programs and Resources for the Texas PTA. <laughs> and within our structure within Texas PTA, we have a concept of something known as a field service representative. And that individual provides additional support to councils and to locals within the area they serve. And we're pleased to have Shauna Jones, who is the Northeast ISD field service rep as well. And Texas PTA would be nothing without a 16 member staff that is housed in Austin 
at 408 West 11th Street, just two blocks down from the Austin Capitol. And our executive director, Kyle Ward, who looks like he might have a career in the CIA at this point, is over here. Now, nothing happens by chance in PTA. There is always a plan, and there are always lots of volunteers who are responsible for making something happen. So I would like to thank the Back the Future Rally Planning Committee. And those individuals are PTA volunteers at the council level, Belinda Cox, y'all stand, Jennifer Easley, Karen Sheehan, Karen Lenartz, Steve Garza, Irma Alcala, and Michelle Montemayor. And members of our staff who are at the Hyatt Grand and the uh, Henry B. Gonzalez Convention Center at this moment, but Carrie Mays and Darren Grissom, all of those individuals were responsible for what you were able to experience and enjoy today. And I would like to thank them for asking me. It was my pleasure to be your MC. Thank you so much for coming. And remember, we are to what? Back the future. Thank you.